Hello, welcome back to Tarot Time with Andy. Thank you for being here. This is my vibrational reading. Please do your own research for entertainment purposes and allegedly. Good morning, good evening, good afternoon, and thank you for being here, and thank you for the super thanks. So as we know, Brian Christopher, I think I'm going to spell it right, Cohenberger, 28 years old, was arrested uh, as the killer of the college Idaho um, students in Idaho, um, the college students. Uh, just by looking at his mugshot, he has a very psychopathic cold glare with smug pleasures and a broken nose. Yes, that is what I noticed. And um, definitely believe he had a goatee at one point in time that he shaved off. Um, yeah, uh, and there's also a redhead that uh, is rumored to have been arrested. And I've spoken about a redhead and not charged yet. So he may have been a collaborator, a lookout guy. So I need to dig into that. Um, <clears throat> just to give you a forewarning, this video will be a little longer because I want to go through my notes and what I've um, collected. Yesterday, that's what I was doing. I didn't want to jump on it right away because I wanted to get down um, everything that's been found out so far, you know, so that I can give it to you in one clump in case you're not into this case and in case that you're, you work a lot and you just don't have that kind of time. So I wanted to cover the bases um, of what I've discovered. Uh, so this is going to be a little bit longer, FYI. So I'm going to go through my notes and then I'm going to throw some cards. And I'm going to ask probably some various questions and I will use my pendulum. So anyways, uh, yeah, as we know, he was a criminal criminology grad student, PhD. Um, he more than likely, I feel he did probably uh, do date rape, kill animals, uh, he was arrested in Pennsylvania. Um, his sister is normal. She went into the occupational therapist kind of nursing um, uh, industry. His parents are normal. And so he more than likely was just born this way. I don't think it was from upbringing. I think this was definitely just a hardwired situation. He is just a bloodthirsty psychopath. Uh, FYI, majority of them do not do this. It's very rare that a psychopath is going to turn to this. Um, it's it's very small in numbers. So don't think that all psychopaths are out to uh, knife you and kill you. They're actually more into um, sword energy in terms of intellectual, uh, financial crimes, uh, more white collar crimes. They're more likely to want to take your money, okay, not your life. So I just want to put that out there. It's a really a false narrative of Hollywood that um, they're out to kill you. Most of them won't do this, but not this guy. This guy was a, a different, unique sick, twisted individual who got off on blood, sex, and violence. Um, something went very wrong with his psyche. Uh, so anyways, yes. Um, what else do I have to say with this here? Um, yeah, the survivors are going to have a problem. There were two that were left that did not, that got out that weren't murdered. Uh, they will end up with survivor's guilt and PTSD. So they're going to have a rough life. So we need to pray for those individuals that um, they can get really good treatment. My my uh, suggestion there, if any family member should hear this, is to get um, to get to get the um, transdermal mental stimulation TMS machine. Uh, it's working great for PTS patients, and um, it they have home zapping devices. You can go into uh, offices and do it, which is more hardcore, but uh, that's proving to be excellent for PTSD students. I mean, excuse me, patients. Uh, it's great for uh, for people who have survived tr very traumatic uh, experiences uh, with great results, over 70% positive rate. So TMS, uh, electrical mental stimulation, uh, where you wet these sponges and you with the headband and it with this gentle current uh, does some things for the prefrontal cortex and it really gets rid of that fight or flight reaction and that panic and that anxiety and that's really what happens with PTSD it's like they're um they're in such panic mode all the time and they can't shut it down and that's what TMS does TMS uh home devices you can get them on Amazon even got to be careful with them though uh, you might need to use some gel. Uh, some of them aren't so great, uh, but um, uh, there is one company, Fisher Wallace, sells a home device that I would recommend. 
uh, and if, uh, if you can't afford or have the insurance uh, to go to uh, get it done professionally, which is really quite the commitment. So that's what I recommend for the survivor's guilt people or anyone out there who has PTSD and has been traumatized. Uh, it should be the first line of defense before medication and drugs as far as I'm concerned. So there's that. So my next page here. Um, he does have that killer look, the dead eyes, the cold eyes, like I said. Um, yeah, will he take the fall by himself is a question I need to ask. Um, he did do a survey on Reddit, uh, and it was sort of a what if, you know, if, you know, if, when you do your crimes, uh, how do you do this? And he, he put out this really kind of twisted um, survey. He was, he was like looking for like-minded people on Reddit, so that's pretty creepy. Um, anyways, um, he was following the girls on, on Instagram. And uh, so, yes, he was uh, trolling them. He was stalking them. So he was stalking them. It is also said he parked his car uh, above the rental house from an angle and from a vantage point where he can observe. Um, anyways, the artificial intelligence photo nailed the image of him, which is really creepy, but it had a goatee on him. And then he was arrested without the facial hair. So that's why I think he definitely shaved off that goatee. And then there was another girl on Twit on TikTok that posted a picture of him standing behind her saying she knew him. She, I guess she was planning on uploading something. And so that's pretty creepy. Seeing her face and then here he is standing in the background. He doesn't look like he's a really large guy, by the way. He looks like he's kind of on the smaller side. Um, yeah, 28 years old. So he did ask, was others arrested? His sister lived near the murder house where the house, where it occurred. So that's where the connection is. That's, he probably would visit his sister. Plus he was going to school, uh, school in the area, you know, only like uh, something like nine miles away. Um, he went to Pullman University, which, which was only 10 minutes away from the University of Idaho. And he did get a PhD in, in the criminal degree. Uh, very um, uh, much like, uh, like, like Bundy, because was it Bundy or one of the others? He, also worked, the other guy, one serial killer, actually worked for um, a suicide hotline. He worked for a suicide hotline, yet he was a serial killer. So it's kind of weird that, uh, it's weird how they kind of align themselves. I, I got the whole, um, uh, that whole TV show uh, with the criminal, the, 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 the psychopath um, that was working in law, and then he was a serial killer. Yeah, Dexter. I got the Dexter vibes going. I was like, wow, how Dexterish is this? It's like it's like a life life and reality kind of blending. To me, I just get this whole Dexter thing, even though he uh, doesn't look like Dexter. So, anyways, yeah, I had that hit my mind. Wow, Dexter. Um, yeah, it's also said that one victim had her intestines uh, hung from the ceiling. Yeah, and uh, really, that came out in a post, and it could have been him. I think he was doing some social media posts revealing himself under anonymous names, just because he was getting a thrill from it. Um, they get a thrill from it. They like to show off. Um, it's, I think he was looking to recruit others and, um, I don't think, you know, he may not have succeeded. Maybe he was trying to dupe people and cause fear and concern in the public by asking, have the others been arrested or making some reference to that? That might just be a game because they love when they do horrible things or even financial crimes or anything to them, it's just a game. I, they love the game. It, it doesn't, it's like life is not real and it's just a game. It's just a game because they're so, they're so emotionally disconnected. It's all an intellectual game to them, which is really sick. Um, let's see what else. Um, they were, yeah, there, there's been two that people are thinking about. Um, Dylan White, 23 and Jason David Elkin, 22, which is a redhead. Um, he also lived in the in the um, in the building for graduates, so that's pretty creepy for the other students. Um, what else? Uh, his parents live in a gated community. He graduated in the fall of twenty two, but he also um, signed up for more classes. Uh, people are thinking he may have been a para. Uh, his his sister, yeah, his mom. Okay, this is where my notes are getting kind of twisted. Sorry, I apologize. I just was rambling, throwing things on as things were coming in. <clears throat> Excuse me. His mother is a teacher, paraprofessional. His dad is a security and criminal investigation. Mm. 
sister is a nurse, went into the nursing helping community. So she is a empathetic individual, more than likely. Uh, I would say probably the uh, mother as well, because uh, she is a, you know, paraprofessional aide. Um, you know, uh, dad, mm, that could be interesting. Uh, let's see. Uh, there was a stabbing in October, excuse me, August 21 in the year 2021 of a Oregon couple sleeping. The wife survived from 19 stab wounds, but not the husband. So I think they're going to look into that to see if there's any connection there. Just want to put that out there. So that should be interesting if that's, if there should be any other connections and he's a total serial killer. Um, yeah, the white car that everyone talked about was found at the residence. Oh, that's a Ted Bunny. Yeah, it was Ted Bunny worked at the suicide hotline. So yes, it was Ted Bunny. They did have a, they call it a 5150 vest on him. Uh, it's pretty standard protocol. It's not that he actually threatens suicide. They usually don't. They don't get suicidal. Psychopaths do not get suicidal. They have no regret, no remorse. So that was just standard protocol. So I have to put that out there. And yes, Kaylee was the target. She was the one he was trolling. Um, what else? Um, hmm. Yeah, people are saying he's a Ted Bundy wannabe. And yeah, the case in Oregon, the mother wants to see if it's connected. So I want to put that there. And then, and then the last creepy thing here is the vo there's a voice on YouTube. And it's called J is for Justice Podcast. And it's on YouTube. You can go to it. J is for Justice Podcast. And he did a video and getting detailed saying that he's, he's connected, a relative, you know, but didn't want to give away his thing, you know, his identity. And there's only three videos there. And I'm wondering, my, my wondering is, is that him? Is J is for Justice? Is it the killer? Is it the killer? Uh, because I wouldn't be surprised, to be honest, because he's trying to get out his information so he can get more attention. So Brian Christopher Kokenberger, is he that YouTuber? Because uh, that would be interesting because he was giving away details uh, to the point where only someone who was there would know. Uh, I seriously doubt that he was able to get any details, either that or this is just a twisted, sick individual who's just getting off on it. So let's find out. That's what I want to do my cards on because we're going to find out quite a bit about this guy. And as far as having other people involved, he may have failed at it, I think. I'm per I have always felt that he's worked alone, that he never got the help he wanted. I think that's just part of the game, part of twisting um, the minds of society and keeping everyone in fear. He would want to keep everyone in fear because that's that level of control. So I want to ask, you know, I want to go into... Uh, was what did he actually recruit? You know, that redhead could have been an attempt to recruit, but it failed. Um, even though, and, and even though they're apparently questioning him, he may get nothing. He may be had some conversations that might be uh, part of what I was getting in terms of a redhead. Uh, probably thought about it, you know, so like minded more than likely uh, has a lot of probably similar thoughts. And that could be just what the problem is. And I have to go let my dog out because she wants out. And she's a puppy. She's, well, she's only two. And she's annoying. Yeah, so you want out. I'm going to let you out. See, she wants in my room and then she wants out. Okay, you want out. You want out. There you go. Okay, there we go. Here I come. Sorry. Sorry, sorry. Please forgive me. Yes, and there she's going to bark now. Yes, it's a yapping little schnauzer, a two-year-old schnauzer girl. Okay, so what did he say? Uh, J is for justice said that, uh, the second victim woke up. Yeah. How would he know that? It's getting creepier. This guy's just making up stories. The second victim woke up and she was grabbed. She screamed loudly. The, she was sorted very, very quickly, forcefully to quiet her. He said three individuals reported a scream at 345 to 4 a.m. And the next day, they found out, they figured the exact moment of screaming that occurred, that was reported, was actually at 3.38 a.m. Um, they did report, and there, there was always loud noises come from the house. It was a party house, total party house, so it wasn't unusual to hear a lot of noises. But there was a, a very loud, very aggressive scream that occurred. Uh, and he also said there was a long serrated knife for hunting. Uh, it was a hunting knife, and I did mention it was a hunting knife. This person liked to kill big game and got off on doing big game, so that's where that comes from. 
uh, the blood mixture be, uh, was because one girl fell on top of the other girl, and so that's where you got the, the, the mixed blood issue problems that the, that the case is having. So that's pretty crazy. Um, this Jace for Justice has had one, 117,000 views on his video. So if you want to go watch this Jace for Justice podcast, uh, it's his last upload, and he could just be a total weirdo, just a total weirdo. Uh, just trying to get attention. So I'm going to ask, is Jay is for justice? Is he the killer? Is Jay is for justice? Is this, is this Brian? Is this Brian the killer? Is this the killer? Is Jay is for justice? Is he the killer? Is he actually the killer? Jay is for justice. Is he the killer? Yes. I'm going to ask again, is Jay is for justice? Is he the killer? Was he involved? Was he involved in any way? Yes. Is he the one they have arrested right now? Is he the one that's apprehended and arrested? Is he the one arrested? Yes. Will we see any more uploads or videos? No. So I'm getting that was him. Yeah, he just, they like that. They get off on that. They just, they got to stay involved. He wanted to do crime just like Dexter and then stay involved. How Dexter is that? So let's get some cards on him. And um, yeah, twisted. So, so twisted. I get a real eerie look by him. He has that total shark eyes, that Brian. Brian Christopher Cop Copenberger. Brian Christopher Copenberger. Brian Christopher Copenberger. Brian Christopher Copenberger. Let's just get some general energy. Let's see what spirit wants to say. Brian Christopher Copenberger. Brian Christopher C Copenberger. Brian Christopher Copenberger. Tell me some more. How's it going? He's not going to care, you guys. So it's going to be kind of, it may end up being creepy because there is no empathy. There is no, I don't care. There's, there's absolutely no emotional connection. So, yes, the Six of Swords, the sad goodbye. So, yeah, he had to leave. This He was hoping he could leave. He did leave. He wasn't in town when he was arrested, just like I said. He was not going to be anywhere near uh, looking for, for a better place here. Uh, so he did leave. He fleed. Getting out of stormy waters is this card. I'm getting out of stormy waters. I'm getting out of here. He'd like to get out of prison, too. He's hoping. He's wondering how, he, how can he uh, move on. How could he move on? And uh, he, he running away, running away, and uh, hoping that there will be better times of what you know coming up. So he'd like to actually probably escape prison. He'd like to get out of there. He's wondering, is there any way I can get out of this for a better place? Uh, can I start over? Uh, he wants out of it. He doesn't want to be held accountable. Then we have the moon card. That's the madness. Yeah, he's totally mad. He's just total lunatic. The moon card is complete total madness and a false wrong path. And that's a challenging position. He knows he's mad. Complete madness. He knows he did the wrong thing with the moon card. He also has mother issues, which I've said before. That's his mommy card. He's got mother issues. <clears throat> Then we have here the King of Swords. Yeah, he's the thought leader. He's the intelligent one. He planned it. He's going to need a lawyer. So now he's going to lawyer up. That's the lawyer card. Uh, he knows the lawyer is going to get the truth, too. He's afraid of the truth. He knows those lawyers have the truth on him also. Um, he wants to be respected. He thought he could be respected for his mind. Uh, it's a brilliant strategist. So he strategized this whole situation. Uh, this card is someone who's very distant and cold. There is no fuzzy, warm feelings with the King of Swords. If you have any emotional problems, uh, you cannot cry on his shoulder. This is not someone who will ever give you uh, emotional um, fulfillment whatsoever. Uh, so he is actually seeking out a lawyer to get some advice because he knows justice is coming for him. And he's hoping that um, he can execute a plan. Uh, that can get him out of the situation because he wants to get out. He wants to get out, but he knows he's completely mad. Complete madness. He knows that it uh, doesn't serve him anymore. He took the risk. The fool's card. He took the risk. Yes, he did. He took the risk, and now he's paying the price. And that doesn't serve him anymore. He's realizing, wow, I, that was mad. 
He enjoyed it though. He actually, th he was thrilled with it because that mugshot, he just has that duper's delight and that coldness and smugness. He, he, he enjoyed it. Under the surface we have here, he's taking on a new perspective right now. He has to sacrifice himself. Now this is self-sacrificial. He needs to go in pause mode. He is in pause mode now. He needs to get in some enlightenment going inward and thinking, rethinking this. Okay. How did I allow myself to get that mad? So he's, he is thinking about how he allowed himself to go from just a normal psychopath and having these fantasies to actually doing it. So he's thinking about that, that risk he took and how mad it was. He knows it was crazy, but he enjoyed it though. And then we have here the eight of cups walking away. He would like to walk away from the situation. He doesn't want to be held accountable. Once again, we don't hold accountability. I'm going to get out of this. I'm going to see if I can walk away from this uh, prison sentence and what they're trying to uh, nail me with. His path is unknown. He's going through a lifestyle change right now. And he realizes he should have changed his priorities in life. So there's some regret there. There's regret only for himself, not for anyone else. The tower event occurred. He's, wow, that was a tower event. My whole life crashed down and I'm not likely to ever rebuild with the tower in reverse. I'm more than likely stuck in this situation and he's now trying to avert further disaster, which would be him having to be held accountable and go to prison for life and or the death penalty because I do, I think I heard that there is the death penalty in that area, which hopefully they get. Depends on if you believe in it or not. Life is good enough because he's going to be so bored, he'll be out of his mind boredom. And boredom is the worst thing for them. Boredom is the enemy of the uh, psychopath. That's why they do what they do. They're adrenaline junkies and dopamine junkies. He was on a huge dopamine high and adrenaline high. He was riding real high. Uh, that adrenaline probably stayed with him for a really long time. Uh, it probably took a lot for him to come down from that adrenaline rush. And that's why they like to get into risky behavior. That's why they like really fast sports. That's why they like jumping out of airplanes. That's why they make really good SEAL soldiers. That's why they make good police officers, snipers. All of that's an adrenaline rush. They're addicted to it. He wants out. He wants out. And he's dealing with the consequences now with the two of swords and he knows his options are limited. They're not going to give him any options. Those swords are down. Uh, he's going to probably people, people are, some people are not going to, um, probably like the situation here. Uh, decisions need to be made and this is dealing with the consequences. Uh, it's not waiting anymore. There's no waiting energy with this because it's in reverse. Upright is a waiting energy. And having a fork in the road decision to make, he made that decision already. The decision was made and now the consequences are coming in. He can't reevaluate what he did. And he also has a blocked heart chakra. He doesn't have the ability to care for other people. It's all intellectual. So it was, it was, it's nothing personal. It was just fun. It was just a game. What don't you get? It's just a game. Nothing personal. Uh, it's just fuel, fuel, fuel. It's just adrenaline. It's dopamine. So here, low boundaries, giving up. Yeah, he, he may not be able to fight this situation with the nine of wands in reverse. Uh, he, he, could, he, never, he did not give himself up. He was arrested. Um, he was defensive and alert and rusting between the battles. He did have his walls up somewhat, but he did kind of lower his boundaries a bit by doing that video that J, that, uh, J is for justice. Uh, was kind of lowering his his um, boundaries a bit. So this is a situation where he's going to have to give up. That's a, the, the fear aspect. He's getting the fear aspect. He's going to have to just give it up. They got too much on him. They're going to have so much on him. Uh, he's not going to be able to. Get, he's not going to be able to keep up his last wand and fight it and get some kind of approval. And that fire is being put out. Basically, the fire of him is being put out. So uh, he will not be able to do anything anymore. He won't be able to take action anymore. He won't be able to go fight again. He won't be able to go to battle again because the Nine of Wands is just rusting between battles. So he won't be able to go out there and do what he wants anymore with passion. He was really hot for it. And that, that, that's that been put out. That, that fire has been put out. Since that wand's down, that fire has been put out. And uh, the game's up. The game's up. And here, we have here the Page of Wands upright. He had that fearless new direction. He was very charming. Sounds like a psychopath. 
confident, daring, passionate, very adventurous. He loved doing it. He took this new direction and he always was fairly uncommitted because they just want to keep going, going, going. Uh, Knight of Wands and the Page of Wands is kind of a wild child kind of card. Uh, they just, they're very fearless energy. And with this page, it's sort of arrested development. I'd say they do have a brain malformation, brain. They have got this issues with maturity. A lot of, some people on uh, Quora say the psychopath is sort of childlike. Um, it's childlike in a way because it's game. Life is a game. Um, there is a, a sense of lack of maturity in them because life is just a game. I need my dopamine. I need my adrenaline. I need my excitement. I need this fearless direction. He was fearless when he did it. There is no fear in them. They don't possess fear. There's no fear in them. So he took that chance. He took that chance and it, uh, he loved it. He enjoyed it. And now he, he can't do it anymore. Ace of Pentacles in reverse. So with the Ace of Pentacles in reverse, he's now, he's now let down. There's going to be lost opportunities for him. He cannot, um, he cannot work. Because Ace of Pentacles upright is, you know, making money, worldly status, getting rewards and gifts of life, uh, you know, getting that job. He was working. He was he was a PhD. He's not going to be able to do that anymore. All opportunities are going to be down. No opportunities anymore. All lost. No growth. And it's all over for him because he killed people and he cannot take it back. Yeah. He cannot take it back. It's the death card. And so... It's all over. He's probably going to get the death penalty. Yeah, he's going to get the death penalty and he can't fight it. Uh, that's He's going to have an inability to accept the situation that he's going to lose. He's going to lose and I say he's going to get the death penalty. That's good. That's really good. Under the surface, we have here Page of Swords. Page of Swords was, yeah, it was, the important communication will come out. Uh, spies and gossip. He was spying on the girls. Uh, sub, you know, this whole thing under under the surface. He was a spy. He was spying on them. He was restless. He had friends, college, you know, colleague community. He was spying. He was in the area, interfering with the affairs of others because of restlessness. He was very restless energy who just enjoyed spying. It's a total spy card. So he was trolling and spying on Instagram, the parking lot, overlooking them. I see him getting the death penalty. He took that fearless new direction and he, all opportunities are gone. He's going to lose. He will not win. He will never root, seed, and grow ever. He can never root, seed, and grow anything ever again. Because you can see there's that, that positive opportunity in life and being able to grow yourself into something better. He's not going to be able to do that. That that's gone. The, the, that his life is over. His life is over here with the death in reverse. Uh, not going to be able to ever get what he wants. But he's going to have a hard time accepting it. That's like you're you're done. You're done. 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 Let's get to the center of the deck. Center of the deck. He's thinking about his family and the people that that supported him. Yeah. Conscious, you know, in the heart of things, he knows he's he's hurt his connections. He knows he came from a loving family. So this is where it's not the parents' fault. We should not point the finger at the parents. Uh, with this card, people need to be kind to the family. They had nothing to do with his mind and who he is. Uh, neither was the community. The community was very nice to him. The community was great with him. Uh, this did not need to happen. This was just his own very dark, um, bloodthirsty psychopath that's very unusual. It's an unusual condition. Don't think they all do this because they don't. And he came from a great family, great community, lots of support. Uh, and so let's not, let's not, uh, people want to always find some blame in the parents. Don't blame the parents. Uh, he came from a very love-filled space. His parents cared for him. He got what he needed. He got what he needed growing up. He really did. He always had the support and the positive um, connection that would form a healthy brain that would help for him to get even where he was. He got all the support he needed, yet he turned out this way. Um, so that's what's sad. And this is where it's just hardwired. 
and he just got into his dark, sick, twisted sexual fantasies like Ted Bundy did. Uh, Ted Bundy said the same thing. His parents were great, but he just went into, he blamed porno, he blamed porns, he blamed uh, his sick, twisted sexual fantasies. So it's very Ted Bundy-ish. I see him getting the death penalty. And um, I do think that Jay is for justice is, um, is this gentleman. I do think it is him. And I don't think we're going to get another upload of video coming from Jay is for justice. Uh, let's pull, let's uh, check the um, pendulum. When he said, uh, are the others arrested? Was he just playing a mind game? When he said, are, has the others been arrested? Was he playing a mind game? Was he playing a, another game with the public? Maybe. Was this him trying to find a lookout guy, a lookout person? Yes. Did this guy do look out for him? Was he a lookout? Did he have a lookout person? Did Brian have a lookout person for him? Did he use a lookout person? Was he successful? No. No. So is this redhead going to get released? Yes. Was it just communication between the two of them? Communication, he knew a lot? Yes. Is this redhead a danger to his mother? Was this redhead a danger to his mother, the redhead? Yes. Did he know a lot about the crime? Does he know a lot about the crime? Yes. Did Brian communicate about the crime? Yes. Okay, I need to ask just for clarification because I could be wrong in my interpretation. <clears throat> is that redhead, uh, is it is Jay's for justice the redhead? Is Jay's for justice the redhead? No. Was it Brian? Yes. Okay. All right. Hopefully my interpretation is correct. There could be some little kinks here and there, but hopefully on point. We'll find out more. Thank you for watching, and may everyone rest in peace. Uh, be kind to the family. He came from a loving, kind, nurturing, supportive, positive net of people, uh, social gatherings. Uh, they wanted him to bear fruit in life, very successful life. Uh, he was part of the community. He had all the emotional bonds available to him, but unfortunately for him, he could not feel it. So let's not point the finger at the parents. All right, you guys, till next time, like and subscribe. Bye-bye.